What's up guys? Four Wheeler Doctor back again. A little public service announcement on the first of this video. How about go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, my subscriber counts way down and I uh, finally figured out how to look at that on YouTube and there's like 94% of the people that watch my videos aren't even subscribed. So guys, hit the subscribe button. Check out some videos and uh, it'll let you know when I upload new ones so you'll get to check out the new videos. But today, our video is going to be on a Sportsman's 550. This is a 2009 model. You might recognize it from an earlier video. I had some issues with the valves on it. Uh, it actually wasn't running when they got it and uh, had a valve problem. If you want to check that video out, I'll leave a, a link uh, up here maybe. And um, what we got going on now is it's making a very bad noise in the transmission. Um, it only does it like right when you start off or when you get it under a load and it sounds like there's a spline shaft and there's a, something going around that spline shaft that's slipping and it just makes a very 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 loud noise. Um, I'm going to probably go ahead and pull the plastics off of it, at least this back half, to get in there and see what it's doing. Uh, I may actually... Um, let me see. I might be able to crank the thing up and hold the brake on it to uh, to make it do it now while I got it on camera just so you can hear it because it is super loud. Alright, I'm going to set the camera back here. that the camera fell over about the time it did it but you didn't really have to see it you just needed to hear it so it makes a horrible noise um, I'm really thinking it's in the transmission I'm gonna probably uh, pull all this back plastics off just so I can get to it uh, this thing is horrible on working on the motor and the transmission just because it's got so much plastic on it um, so I'm gonna pull those off and I may end up taking the maybe the front drive shaft out just to eliminate the front end on it but it really sounds like it's in the rear end, or in the uh, transmission and I, I may be able to tell a little better once I get all the plastic off of it. So what I'm going to start off doing, um, I'm going to pull the floorboards off. It's got, this one here's got push pins and all the little holes here. Um, four 10 millimeter bolts in the bottom here and they have nuts on the bottom of those. And then we got some Torx headed bolts here around the side. I think you just have to take these three off, these two in the back, and these two in the front to get the plastic pretty well loose. And I think there's a, maybe one or two more under the seat here that you also have to pull off. Uh, yeah, they're just push pins here and here. And this whole back back half will come off. Um, do have to unplug the tail lights. But let me uh, go ahead and tear into this thing well, as it goes with most of these things it takes longer to get all the plastics off than it does to do a repair but this is going to be a lengthy repair anyway I think so let me get up, get it tore down I'll cut the camera back on when I make a little progress on it guys I was wrong on this uh, back rack here you don't have to take these side um, bolts out these are T27 uh, the only ones you have to take off are the two here at the back and the two here at the front and then that pretty much is all that holds this back uh, fender on. You also have to, like I say, take those push pins out. And you need to take the push pins out of this side piece here. It holds this cover on. Side there, side there, and over here. And it's going to be um, close to the same on the other side. We don't have that side black piece of plastic, but still got to get all of them off the floorboards. And once you get off the floorboards and off of here, then this thing will come off. So let me get that floorboard loose on the other side and I'll cut the camera back on right when I pull it off. Alright guys, got everything loose on here. Uh, the only other thing you got to take off is the uh, socket for the tail lights. And they just twist out. You twist those. Uh, if you're looking at the socket, twist it counterclockwise. Do the same thing over here on this side. Well counterclockwise on one side, clockwise on the other side, and that pulls them right out. All right, and then all you gotta do is lift up on this back fender, 
So we'll put this thing up on the stand so you can see what we're doing. <coughs> You just lift up on this and it should come right off here if we've got everything loose. Everything loose except for a wire holder. Let's pop that thing out. I don't have a screwdriver with me. I think my pocket knife's in my other pocket, so there you go. <coughs> And then take your whole fender off. And that gives you access to the little of the transmission. <coughs> you also can pull these floorboards off now. <coughs> Wiggle them around a little bit, they'll come off of that. Don't really, ain't really worried about them on the other side right now. So, what we're wanting to do is get in here to. I think I want to um, take the cover off and see what the clutches are doing. It almost seems like the clutches are engaging and spinning something in the transmission and then something in the transmission slipping. But I just want to check that to make absolutely sure. So what I need to do now is uh, jack the rear of it up, take this uh, left rear tire off, 17 millimeter uh, socket to get those off. And then we'll have to remove this brace here I think those are 15 millimeter, but uh, let me get it jacked up, get the tire off, and uh, I'll get that brace pulled off, and then we'll look at taking the uh, belt cover off of it. All right, cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys, got this last frame bolt to get out. These are 15 millimeters. Comes just off like that. That just allows you to be able to get this belt cover off. Otherwise, you can't get that out of the frame without pulling the rear end out and all that. All right, so uh, next thing I'm going to do, there's some bolts on the very bottom of this belt cover that are not the easiest thing to get to. So uh, I think I might pull this um, this little half skid plate, the back skid plate here, pull this off. And I'm going to have to take this off too. The... Um, boot protector because there's a bolt back there that you can't get to so I'm gonna pull the boot protector off pull the skid plate off and that should allow access all the way around this thing to get the um, get the belt cover off and we're probably we're going to end up pulling this transmission too so that'll make it a little easier to get to so let me get these uh, these four allen heads off of the of the boot protector the Torx head bolts out of the skid plate and I'll cut the camera back on in a sec all right, guys, I got the boot protector off. It's got a couple clamps and a couple bolts. They're five millimeter Allen head. And also pulled the skid plate off. Those are uh, T35 Torx heads, and there's seven of those. You got um, four on the outside. And I'm not sure if something's warped up on this bike or what, but for some reason I had to take the the boot protector off of this side however i had room to get the nut all or the bolt off the other side um i don't know if it's bent up or if it's made like that but if i had to bet i'd probably say it's not supposed to be different on one side as it is on the other but anyway um there's seven of those you got uh, four on the outside up on the frame right here then you got three across the front so uh, the next thing we need to do is pull this belt uh, box cover off not the whole box just the cover uh, 10 millimeter bolts appears to be about uh, probably 10 or so of those uh, about the easiest thing to do is a quarter inch drive on a little ratchet you can do it by hand these are actually pretty coarse threaded bolts so they come out pretty easy but uh, I'm just trying to do it fast so I'll get these pulled off and then we'll see if we can pry that cover apart uh, I think it's got some silicone on it so it's going to be a little tough to get off but all right, let me get these loosened up, and I will uh, cut the camera back on when I get the cover off. All right, guys, I got all the um, belt box bolts out of there. Next thing we need to do is take this duct off of here. Uh, this does have a snorkel on it. I'm not real sure what this looks like from the factory, but I'm sure it's not like this. So um, we'll loosen these clamps up and this clamp here and pull that off so we can get 
uh, the belt cover to actually slide off because it won't come off with this thing still attached. So I'm going to have to whittle away at some of this silicone and hopefully it won't be too bad to get off there. I'll uh, pull this off and then I'm going to pry around here the cover with the, uh, my little handy dandy screwdriver here and see if I can get this silicone to pop off. It's going to take me a minute so I'll cut the camera back on once I get the cover off. Alright guys, I got the uh, belt cover pried off here. I don't think from the factory they come with any kind of sealant on them. Um, I think it's just, I really don't know what's in there. I believe there's a gasket in there. But uh, this one here, like I said, was snorkeled and it was siliconed up. So you shouldn't have that much trouble getting yours off as I did with mine. But you just wiggle this thing out of here, kind of kick the bottom out, slide it down, and it pulls off. Um, and I expect the clutches here. Just off the bat, I don't see anything, still don't like anything's wrong with these. That's, I don't see anything out of, out of place or belts pretty tight. So, what I want to do is crank this thing up with these belts or with the clutches exposed and do like I did before, hold the brake and see if the clutch, I know this clutch is going to spin because this is the, um, the primary. Uh, I want to see if the secondary clutch spins and the wheels don't. So that will tell me if something's going on actually in the transmission, without, which I really think that's what it is. So let me uh, shut this door down because this thing's loud and I don't want to wake the neighbors up. But uh, I'll shut the door down and I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. We'll see. Alright guys, let's try this again. I got it sitting on the ground now with the tire on, so we'll see what it does. It takes a lot of pressure to make it do it, but uh, it definitely does it when you're riding it. And it appears that the secondary is spinning some, and the tires naturally aren't. Uh, sounds like the popping's coming from the right side over here. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but I don't think there's anything else to do but to pull the transmission off and. Uh, tear it apart and see what's what it looks like on the inside um, I may it's really not too terribly bad to get off there so uh, probably gonna stop the video for now and we will uh, pick it up tomorrow on, uh, on pulling this off we should should be able to get it apart next time you see it and uh, tore down to at least figure out what the problem is Alright guys, back on day two of this uh, transmission removal. Really didn't take me two days to do this. I was just working on these in the evening. So, um, Next thing we're going to do is uh, loosen these four, or remove these four bolts on this um, output shaft. This uh, Allen head uh, six millimeter. Uh, if the camera will focus. And the camera will not focus. So we got, you just take my word for that, six millimeter. Uh, I'm going to get those four, those four bolts off and then we're going to start removing these engine bolts here that hold the transmission to the engine. Um, there's, I believe, eight of them. So uh, we're going to remove those and with the engine motor, I mean the transmission mount still in place, it'll kind of hold everything together. So we'll pull those off first and then we'll take these couple bolts out of the transmission mount and this thing will come off of here. Um, I'll cut the camera back on. I'll get the drive shaft loose. Go ahead and um, well, you can see four of the bolts here. You got one at the top. It's actually got a ground wire on it. Two, three, one on the bottom, and it's about the same situation on the other side. I still have the uh, floorboard over here, so I have to pull that off. 
um, the bolts on the other side I think there's a one or two of them that go in from the other direction come in from the motor side but it's pretty self-explanatory to which ones you pull out I'll get these off and I may cut the camera back on the other side just so I can show you exactly where those are and um, not really sure what the size is either. I'm thinking it's a 13 millimeter, but I'll uh, confirm that when I cut the camera back on too. All right, guys, I got all these bolts out of here. Once you get those all out, get this output shaft off. You just wiggle the thing forward. It's supposed to just be able to wiggle the thing forward, and it pop off. Um, this one's kind of stuck on the flange here. I'm gonna have to tap it with a hammer, and I don't have a hammer within the arms reach here so let me grab one see if I can knock it off we'll change sides here all right so there's our shaft tap this thing with a hammer there it is see it pops right off slide it forward and then flip your flange up and slide it back and your shaft will come right off just like that Pretty easy to get that one off. I think I'm gonna still uh, I'm gonna crank this thing up one more time and see if it's still making that noise. Um, even with the rear end unhooked, the front end is still hooked up. So let me uh, crank it back up and see what it does. All right, guys. While I crank it up, it looks like we got problems with the four wheel drive too, because the rear output shaft naturally isn't hooked up. So I can't put a strain on the transmission, put it in four wheel drive and it doesn't seem to lock in either so i'm not sure what's going on with that but i don't think it's got anything to do with the transmission because the drive shaft going to the front diff was working so um already got the four bolts out on this side do have to take this uh boot off here and uh like i said before i'm not real sure what the factory bikes look like this one does have a snorkel but you'll have some sort of uh probably plastic boot or something up here with a uh, clamp on it you'll have to take off to to get this loose from the transmission it's got some silicone in it too uh, goodness gracious this is pretty strong silicone as you can see by the force I have to use to get it off here if I pop that on off kind of stuck on the back side there somewhere It's coming. There we go. All right, and then we got two uh, vent lines here you have to remove. They've got some little uh, little clips on them. You can take a pair of pliers and push the clips in, slide those things off. Got both of those loose, and this was the uh, ground wire that was in one of those bolts there. All right, so that's everything pretty much on this side, with the exception of this motor mount. So we're going to take it out last. Uh, let's jump over to the other side. I'll show you where those transmission en engine bolts are over there. As well as any anything else you're going to have to take off to get this thing out of here. Alright guys, the bolts for this side. Uh, looks like we've got three more left, I believe. Uh, one right here. It goes in from the engine side back. And you've got one here and one on down here that you can see about the end of my finger. Um, so we're going to loosen those up. Also going to need to take this uh, shifter linkage bolt off, which is a 10 millimeter. Uh, pull that off, and we'll probably just unplug this. This is a gear selector. tells what gear it's in. Transmission, you just flip the uh, clip up on it and slide it off there. Like that. And one other. I think this is a um, speed sensor back here. Same deal on it unclip it pull it down and so we'll get these other three bolts out and start working on these motor mounts get the motor mounts out and then we'll be able to just slide this thing back all right i'll cut the camera back on and start on the motor mounts just show you what they look like all right guys now we're uh, going to work on these motor mounts here i mean just wire it away these are uh 13 millimeters just a, two long bolts that go through the transmission and then one bolt here, this uh, 15 millimeter, that actually holds it to the frame. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, remove these bolts completely 
and probably gonna have to take this one all the way out on the other side it's the exact same setup but the only difference is this uh notch through or this hole through the frame on the other side is slotted so all you have to do is loosen this bolt up over there and it, the motor mount will come completely off so uh this side we're gonna have to take it all the way off and um i'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and do those remove those bolts completely do it on the other side and i'll cut the camera back on right before i slide this thing off here all right guys i got the uh, bolts removed out of these motor mounts um this one on the left side you don't have to remove it i don't think um the way it's the bracket goes in front of the transmission so when you slide it off it shouldn't be in the way now the one on the other side is it is the exact opposite of this the brackets on the back side of the transmission and that kind of makes sense why they slotted the hole uh, for this 15 millimeter uh headed nut or bolt or whatever to come out uh, so you can loosen it up slide that off and then that'll let you remove the trans so um i've got this side ready to come off the other side i've got to uh pry it up a little bit with a crowbar and um i should have it where i can get it off just as soon as i pull that motor mount out so let me uh let me jump over here on the other side and pry up on this thing and what's going to happen is you as you pull this out um the front drive shaft is just going to slide off of the output shaft of the transmission so you shouldn't have to really worry with anything with it all right so i've got this picked up now there's our motor mount and the one remaining bolt i still have stuck in it like i say i didn't even i did but i didn't have to take this bolt all the way or the nut all the way off on this side it would have just slid right off because of that slot in the frame all right so that should be everything now it's just a matter of uh picking the transmission up a little bit and sliding it back biggest thing now is to get the uh, get the the output shaft off the one that's going to the front all right hang on just a sec all right guys sorry about that um so just pick up on this thing you can see you got a big gap in it already it's it's sliding back pretty easy here got to get it off of this drive shaft over here there it is all right that should be it god i bet you i'm gonna have to i think i'm gonna have to jack this thing up and take that tire off i'm pretty sure if we left those cl that clutch on there it's not going to slide out with the tire on there so let me uh let me get this left rear tire pulled off jacked up and pulled the tire off and then it should come right out of there so i'll cut the camera back on in just a second all right guys that tire off there that should give us enough room guys you're gonna have to ex excuse the sweat stains on my shirt because it is a balmy 87 degrees here at 10 o'clock at night so uh I'm, I'm pretty warm out here um, so just uh, keep continue sliding this thing back a little bit until you get the, the little coupler the engine coupler off there it is right there and then the uh, there's a rubber piece in here too that kind of goes between the coupler of the engine and the coupler of the transmission and make sure you get it slid back so you don't tear that thing I believe what we're going to do here is pick up on the bottom and kind of rotate this around to get the transmission to come out hopefully this is going to work said earlier and I believe we're gonna have to pull that transmission mount off of this side in order to get this to come out 
I mean, it is so close. So close from coming out. out without taking that motor mount off and you know I like to struggle a little bit with it too so there you go transmissions out this is the uh, rubber coupler I told you about I want to make sure it didn't get hung up on something also want to make sure that thing didn't broke <coughs> they've uh, seen them some of them break before so there you go transmissions out put this tire back on this thing and roll it on the trailer and then we're going to tear this thing apart and see what in the world is making that god awful noise in it alright I'll cut the camera back on when I get this thing put together and get ready to pull this transmission apart alright guys I went ahead and pulled this uh, secondary bolt out It was a it's a 13 millimeter bolt like this a little small one this other one here is actually the primary clutch is a 18 millimeter I'm thinking yeah that one's reverse thread so you actually put it in tighten it up to get it off and it's got this little sleeve make sure you get that out of there when you take it off all right you don't have to have a puller for the rear but you do need one for that for that uh, I say rear the secondary you do need one for that primary uh, I have one here that I made, and I'm pretty sure this one's going to work. I think it works for most Polaris's. I'll leave a link in the description because I don't know what it is right now of the thread count on here. It's just a uh, piece of all thread. It is fine th thread metric, and I took two nuts and just jammed them up on the top of it up here. And I've used this a whole bunch of times, and it seemed to work real well. The um, I did take the end of it and taper it a little bit so that it uh, wouldn't go into the, wouldn't mess the threads up on the end of the all thread and uh, you know mar up the clutch when you go to take it off. I can't figure out which size it is. 28 millimeters. What I got? I know yours might be different, but uh, I did put a little oil that to help uh, help it run down and pull it off a little easier. Goodness gracious, it's going to go down on there a country mile before it bottoms out. There we go. All right, just hit it with the impact. There you go, and it pulls it out. Dang, that thing's too loud. All right, there we go. Goodness gracious. All right, so you just pull, pick your primary up like that. Belt and all that will come all off at one time like that. And then your secondary should slide right off of here. Just like that. All right, now you're left with this uh, plastic cover. You do have to remove that in order to get to all the bolts for the, for the actual transmission. It looks like there's two, four, six, eight, ten bolts. Uh, look, appear to be uh, 10 millimeter heads to get that off. So let me uh, let me run those off, and I'll cut the camera back on as soon as I get them out. All right, guys, I got the uh, cover off. It did have a layer of some type of sealant on it, so I had to pry it up a little bit. It didn't break anything, so it was good. But uh, I'll scrape that off and probably just put some silicone around it to put it back together. All right, next bolts you need to take out. There's pretty much all these around this edge here. Uh, there's about 18 of them, I think. And I believe they are a 13 millimeter. Yes, it's a 13 millimeter. So I'm going to get all those loosened up. And then we'll be able to pull this cover off. As the transmission is sitting here, pull this cover off. 
and all the other gears and shafts and all that stuff will stay in there so uh, let me get those loosened up and we'll cut the camera back on all right guys i got this thing up on my little stool here there's a good chance this is going to fall off here when i um, get ready to take these top part top piece off got all these bolts out and there is a bunch of them 13 millimeter heads uh you can pretty much see where they're at and now we're just going to try to pry this thing off get up under it it's got a uh a layer of, of rtv on it that um is going to hold it a little bit and there's also a pry point here stick a screwdriver in there and twist it to the side and hope it comes off. That thing is tight. Actually, this thing got a couple pry points on it. And once you ever get it to pop up in one spot, uh, it'll come the rest of the way. There it is. Got it to pop up there. So you can just work your way around from there. Grab me a little bit bigger screwdriver. Stick in this gap here. Pry up on it. There we go. Alright, what I like to do on these things most of the time to keep these shafts from coming off and, uh, and gears falling all over the place, just take and tap them a little bit. You ain't got to beat them till, and I know this is a ball peen hammer, you ain't got to beat them till it messes up the end of the shaft, but it does help. Uh, to tap these things down it helps keeping all the gears and everything together and it might be fine if you just snatch it off like it is but I, I kind of like to keep everything in that bottom case just to uh, makes, it a little, makes it a little easier to see what you got going on comes off just like that this one shaft here stayed in the front cover that's for the um, that's for the shifter up here all right and just right off the bat I don't really see anything wrong other than this chain has a ton of slack in it bunch of slack. The all the all the teeth on these shafts appear to be together. All there. Shim right there. Yeah but you can see that that chain has got a ton of slack in it. thinking that's going to be the issue because I don't see any any teeth and it doesn't in this case it doesn't really sound like a, a gear missing teeth because what happens or what it normally sounds like when you've got a, a tooth tooth missing is it will slip on that tooth but as it rotates around the transmission will still turn over and then might slip when it gets back to that tooth but it will still turn over and see in this case it um well, remember earlier from the video it um it w just won't turn to begin with then uh you can let off and it'll pull a little bit and then it'll do it again so i'm thinking it's this iron chain i mean it just looks horrible i need to see i guess i'm gonna see how to get these uh get these shafts out of here I'm pretty sure if i get this one out i can loosen these two torx head bolts up and take that plate off and uh, this shift shaft and that other gear shaft with the gears on it will come off and I can get the whole thing off. So um, I think I'm going to try that first and we'll see how that goes. I'll cut the camera back on when I get it ready to come off. Alright guys, now I'm gonna, um, I got these two Torx heads out. They are a T30 Torx head. 
uh, the plate just slides out of here. And then I think I can pick up on this shaft, get this one to slide out. The gear is still on it, and you can see the teeth on there look good. Every one of them's good on there. And then this one here. Oh, it's catching this. It's catching this gear over here on this um uh, uh what that's called compensator shaft. Can pull this one out. It looks good. Like I say that one does have a shim out there on the bearing. See if I can get this thing. There we go. It'll wiggle crap past it. So there you go. That's how you pull it out. These are the two bolts that I took out of that cover. So I'll cut the camera back on in a sec right when I uh, start to pull those other shafts out. Alright guys, I'm going to just leave this compensator shaft in here. It's bolted in from the other side. I don't see any problems with it. I'm going to see if I can get this other shaft out of here. Uh, slide this shaft here that the shift forks are on and slide the shift forks out. Got two of those. Not sure if that one's going to come out so we'll leave it in there. Lay this to the side. And I'm going to see if I can pick both of these up at the same time. Just like that. And it comes out. Put this shift fork back on the shaft. Just like that. Um, this shaft here. Again, teeth look good on it. We've got another chain here. It's in a lot better shape than the other one. I can see where it could slip too, but um, I don't think don't think that's what our issue is. There's actually I, don't know, I thought that was a piece of metal, but that's a piece of uh, of RTV. And then this shaft here, you actually can see this is where that other chain rides. You can actually see some wear on those teeth, and that's what's looking like. That's going to be our problem because it's got a uh, definitely got some wear on the teeth. I may end up trying to just find a uh, a used transmission to buy for this thing because uh, these look pretty rough and. I don't know. Even these uh, where I shift the cogs go in there, they look a little rough too. So I don't know if that's uh, we got a lot of stuff wore out in this one. I'm going to uh, probably just order another one. Order a, just uh, one of these sets off of eBay. And it's got to be in better shape than this. So that's what we're going to do. I'll, uh, I'm probably not going to do an um, install video back on this, but you can kind of halfway see how, how it comes apart. You should be able to get it back together. So then we'll uh, order some parts and we'll get this thing thrown together. And hopefully everything's going to work out right. But uh, y'all check out my other videos. Hit the like button. Definitely subscribe. I need some subscribers out there. Y'all help me out. Have a good night.